I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. Dominica is known around the world as the nature island, and for good reason. With tropical rainforest making up about two-thirds of the land and over 1,200 unique plant species, this island country is famous for its unspoiled natural beauty. And that's because they're committed to conserving their natural treasures while building economies that sustain and empower local communities. Nestled between the Caribbean islands of Guadeloupe and Martinique, Dominica is literally just a speck on most maps. It's only 290 square miles, smaller in size than the city of Indianapolis and with a total population that could fit inside the Louisiana Superdome. The island country of Dominica is, in many ways, isolated from the conveniences we enjoy at home. Yet Dominica boasts strong environmental health, resource preservation, and the cultivation of sustainable practices. Thanks to the efforts of forward-thinking preservationists, Dominica has established more protected parks, forests, and marine reserves per capita than almost anywhere on the planet. And that culture of protecting these precious resources is something its citizens treasure dearly. At some time or another, we've all stumbled upon a place in our travels that we've fallen in love with. For many, it's the climate. For others, the beauty or the lifestyle. And for a few, it's the unspoiled environment and the efforts to keep it that way. And then there's Jim Winston. He was so smitten by Dominica's commitment to stewardship that he moved here to help protect it while forming an ecotourism business to educate others on the role we all play in the bigger picture. I was um, 20 years old working in a bank in London and looking at the managers thinking that's not the job I want. So I decided uh, I was going to go and travel and see the world and we landed in Dominica and I remember I, hit, I walked up to Trafalgar Village which I think probably a good couple of hours with my 20 kilo rucksack on my back and I met up with a couple of local people and stayed with them and just really enjoyed the village and fell in love, fell in love straight away with the island. The natural beauty was incredible, it was all unspoiled, everything's exaggerated, you know, huge leaves and lots of water and just big and really special, powerful nature. So having already decided I wanted to live in Dominica, having already decided that eco and green was the way I wanted to go. Lo and behold, by coincidence, that's what the government was looking for at the same time. And after three weeks, I found this piece of land. It was an overgrown, disused banana plantation that hadn't been used for about three years. And as soon as I saw it, man, it was exactly what I was looking for. Perfect in the way it was set out to build the cottages, the beautiful rivers around the side, the amazing local people in the nearby village. Jim's contribution to ecotourism offers the best of both worlds for visiting guests. While they enjoy the pristine beauty of the surrounding rainforest, many of the modern conveniences we can't seem to do without are still available. But in this case, it's all accomplished with environmentally conscious approaches. Power is generated in two primary ways. To take advantage of the sunny days, solar panels placed on rooftops throughout the property provide sufficient energy to generate the basic needs for each cottage. But what's a rainforest without some rain, right? So on those days when clouds blanket the sky, wind offers another energy source. The turbines convert that power, which is then stored in batteries. It's the ideal combination for providing a renewable power source anytime. One of the other things that was perfect about the property was the way that all of the natural things made it perfect for the use of renewable energy. It gets a lot of sun all day. So the first thing we did was build a house facing south 
angled at 16 degrees to catch the sun because Dominica lies at 16 degrees and that gave us all of the electricity that we use on the property. Today we've expanded the system a little bit but it's still the same system. Um, we've also got two solar panels that go directly down to the river that power a 24 volt water pump that can pump about 250 gallons an hour up about 180 foot from the river and then we use gravity to send it down to the cottages. On the roof of each cottage there's a home brewed solar hot water heating system which is really efficient, really cheap to build and these days I actually run workshops teaching locals how they can make them using lots of different recycled materials. And when it comes to agriculture, like much of Dominica, a lot of what Jim and his guests consume here is harvested fresh from the garden. So staying consistent with a commitment to environmental stewardship, everything grown on the property is 100% organic. Although you might like the idea of experiencing all that Dominica has to offer, you might not prefer getting so back to nature. Fortunately, they offer the best of both worlds. There are several places on the island that offer some of the finer amenities while still maintaining their focus on the bigger picture of environmental stewardship. In fact, one such place has taken it a big step further with their commitment to renewable energy, resource conservation, and the protection of wildlife and their habitats. And on the beach in front of their property, that includes sea turtles. Okay, imagine if you will that you're an 800 pound turtle. Just go with me on this one. You come up on this beach between like a midnight and three o'clock in the morning to lay your eggs. There's only a couple places on this island where they can do so. Three, and this is one of them. They have to be protected. So this is actually where one of the turtles were two nights ago. Its head would be about this big. This would be one of the flippers here. Its body is about this big this is one flipper, and this is the little hole where it laid its eggs. It is a huge, majestic animal. It's just awesome. And what happens is, that whole thing takes about two and a half hours of that process. She slides back into the ocean. And then these guys, what they do is they exhume the eggs and bring them over there, which is where the turtle hatchery is. Now the great thing is, tonight I'm joining Chef Sean to cook and raise money to make sure these guys are still being paid, because every night, on the hour, they walk these beaches to make sure no one's poaching the turtle, for one. And if they find a turtle, they can measure it, take all the documentation, they can even tag them if they haven't been tagged. Because only one out of a thousand leatherback sea turtles makes it to adulthood. So we really have to do everything we can as a world community to make sure that these animals survive. With Dominica's reputation as the nature island of the Caribbean, it certainly makes for an attractive destination. I mean, come on, look at this place. But the country's in some transition. Now the tourist industry is growing every year and that certainly contributes towards economic development. But Dominica's also focused on its sustainability and that growth can create some challenges. Well, every country is beautiful in its, in its own way. Um, I've seen some really beautiful spots in the United States, but for us in Dominica, protecting what we have is the basis of our economy. What we do is to ensure that the forest estate, meaning the forest reserves and the national parks are protected. But my role as, you know, as a forestry officer is to ensure that Dominica's forest and wildlife estate remains intact so that when people come, they can enjoy it and ensure that it becomes part of our development first. Uh, our people, you know, we look to the US you know, for guidance in so many dif um, different ways. Um, as you look at, you know, at the development, you, we see a notion of what is development. You know, Dominica has to strike a balance between what it does with its natural resources and what it does in, in, in terms of making the visitor and Dominicans comfortable on the island. We have to redefine our development. We have to take a position where our natural resources become as fundamental to our economic and social development. So we have to build around our natural resources. We have to create a niche for ourselves. The forest becomes an important resource for several reasons. Certainly because of the carbon sequestration and the protection of the watersheds along with the 365 rivers that flow through it. 
but it's also an important economic asset because visitors love the lushness and the beauty of the island. And because so much of the area is protected, both inland and around the coast, much of the wildlife is safe in and around the island as well. Our wildlife is important to us because it is, it is part of, of the natural process which assists in agricultural production and agriculture remains fundamental to our economy. We have fresh water flowing in our, in our rivers and who can put a value on fresh water? So from that basis we have to kind of redefine our, our, our development and tailor what we do on the island in sync and in line with protecting and conserving natural resources. You know, for Dominica's sake, we'll remain small, but it has to be, it has to be created in such a way that small is not, is not a negative, small can be positive. And that is how we want to re redefine and propel our development forward as we move into, into the future. When it comes to growing a greener world, we're all in this together. And Dominica's forward-thinking efforts to preserve natural resources is well complemented by their efforts at finding new ways to promote a commercial agricultural economy in an environmentally responsible way. Almario Casimir is at the helm in leading Dominica's ag future into the 21st century. No matter what country you live in, financial resources are so precious, the fact that Dominica was willing to allocate a number of those dollars towards organic agriculture is pretty impressive. What prompted them to do that? Well, basically having the potential to, all, to do it, the natural resource base, and basically the opportunities that exist globally, seeing what other people were doing, and being convinced that that was the right way and the way forward in terms of a sustainable livelihood and a sustainable form of agriculture. Sure. Yeah. Now, those dollars need to have some sort of return on the investment. So what does Dominica look at for the future to get in the return for that investment? Our primary focus here is to try to see the potential of creating an alternative form on industry of agriculture, primarily based on natural resource utilization. In a nutshell, we really are convinced that the flora potential of Dominica has the ability to transform agriculture into a billion dollar industry, primarily for the use and the development of alternative inputs, compost material, biopesticides, botanical sprays. The greenery of Dominica spells it out in terms of having a biological lab for exploitation and research. So that is our primary focus, how we can actually utilize the natural resource base in terms of an alternative form and a sustainable form of agriculture. Yeah, that's a great way to go. Now all over Dominica, agriculture is huge, but it's mostly made up of mom and pop farms, just like this one here. But this happens to be the equivalent of what's certified organic in the U.S. And when you break it down to find out how that happens here, the principles are pretty much the same. First of all, it's right plant in the right place. They've got a vegetable garden here that's in full sunshine. But then, most of their time is spent in improving the soil. Check this out. I mean, that is awesome soil. It's not compacted, it binds together properly, but it breaks apart easily. That's exactly what you want. Now, with 365 inches of rain here, they've got to have some great drainage. And you do that with building up your soil and building up the beds. And as you can see, these are really mounted beds. That keeps these plants healthy. But because of the attention on the soil and having the right plant in the right place, they rarely, if ever, even use any chemicals at all, and I'm talking about organic and natural chemicals. These plants are healthy, they're pest and disease free. They do that by focusing on the basics and being proactive, and anybody can do that. In many ways, an island setting like this provides the ideal growing conditions because of just the right amount of sunlight and rain combined with perfect temperatures and you can grow just about anything. In fact, this garden right here is only two months old and look at it already. But topography is a whole nother challenge here. You have it pretty high there, pretty low there, but that hasn't stopped them from creating a lot of usable space. And they do that with terracing. They took some wood from the property, in this case some old logs, and built up the low side and then created some level beds. So now they have a lot of room to garden. So at home, if you think that your yard isn't suitable for gardening because of the slope, think again and try terracing. And check out this broccoli, by the way. At the rate it's growing in another month, they're gonna be having some great fresh broccoli. Today, Dominica's primary revenue source is divided between ecotourism and agriculture, with more emphasis every day towards environmentally friendly methods. And with an ideal climate for growing so many types of crops, it's easy to see why agriculture contributes so heavily towards Dominica's economy. 
and the warm Caribbean waters surrounding this lush island supports a bounty of fresh seafood that's there for the catching. So what happens when you put Chef Nathan into the local farmer's market where it all comes together? Well, that can only mean one thing. This market is teeming with life, amazing flavors, some of the smells incredible. Now, we are here at the Rozo Market. Here I am, and I'm surrounded by some amazing stuff like tamarind. We have uh, finger bananas, right? Pretty cool. Other things you may be more familiar with, like mangoes, tomatoes. But wherever you go, always buy local, because those flavors always got to work best with whatever's purchased or caught here. Fresh fish, we're on an island, we're going to make some fresh fish today. So let's go for, well, mango. I have a quick question. I'm thinking about making a fish, a locally fresh fish dish. I have uh, mangoes, I have some limes. Is there anything else that you would recommend that would go really well with this? We have the seasoning peppers. Seasoning peppers, okay. We have the parsley. All right. The green onions, we call it chive. Okay. And the fresh thyme. Fresh thyme. You know I love fresh thyme. I've never tried these before, but I'm gonna try them because, well, she grows this stuff. The locals know it works best with the local cuisine. When you go to your local farmer's market, ask questions because the answers are right behind you. Okay, so where do the locals come to get their fresh fish? Well, they come here at the fish market. Take a look at this. What they do is the local um, fishermen go out and then as soon as they catch the fish, they pack it on ice to preserve the freshness. So here we are, when you look around, there's mostly women here wielding machetes, chopping this fresh fish. Okay, we have our fresh fish from Cecilia, fresh produce from the market. We're ready to cook. Let's go. You know, when you come to a place as beautiful as Dominica, what you want to do is you want to be like the locals. You shop locally and you cook outside. You can do this in your backyard when it's a beautiful day. We're doing it here today in Dominica. This morning at that really great fish market, we got that wonderful fresh mahi-mahi or dolphin fish. And here it is right here. Check this out. All right. Now what we're going to do, because it already has a wonderful sweet flavor to it, we're just going to accentuate that a little bit. Salt and pepper, but also my favorite herb, fresh thyme. I'm going to pick some of this off, right off the stems. All right. A little bit of fresh thyme. There we are. Now, mahi-mahi is not an endangered uh, species, this fish. That's why you can go ahead and find it, use it, cook it, eat it, enjoy it. But what do you do if you're not really sure which fish to get? Which ones are grown or harvested in a sustainable manner? How are they caught? Well, if you go to growingagreenerworld.com, I have a little special something from the Monterey Bay Aquarium for you, which is super easy to find out exactly which fish to buy from your fishmonger or from your locals. And there we go, we'll set this off to the side and they'll go on the grill in just a bit. Now, all the fresh produce we got, mangoes. We've got a mango, orange, salsa with a little bit of ginger. It's gonna be fantastic, watch this. The way you go ahead and cut through a mango, the seed is a little bit thin. Instead of peeling it with a regular peeler, let me show you a little shortcut here. We'll put it on the top, let it sit. I'm gonna cut straight down, but just a little bit to the side. Now, to get the mango out, just be really careful. This is for adults only. We're gonna slice into the flesh like this in little slices, about a half an inch apart. Just be really careful. You're gonna turn it, do the exact same thing. About a half an inch apart. And they should fall right off. And these are totally ripe and delicious. All right, so the mango's in there. We're gonna add a little bit of spice in here. These, I got this morning, right, here in Dominica. This is a seasoning pepper. Now I tasted this, and everyone's saying, well, it's not sweet and it's not hot. It's actually right in the dead center of sweet and hot. So for me, I like a little bit more heat. So when I'm back at home in California, use a habanero. Otherwise, a little bell pepper, it's completely up to you. Mix it up, guys. Whatever you have grown locally, that's what you want to use. We'll slice this up. All right, a little bit of heat, that goes in. Red onion always works perfect for salsas. We're gonna add a little bit, maybe a quarter of a small red onion. All right, what's up next? Oh, ginger, that gentle heat of the ginger. We definitely want this in here. 
We're gonna peel it with the back of a spoon. Your thumb goes in. We're gonna press away so that just the skin comes off. Otherwise, if you use a regular vegetable peeler, you take a lot of ginger with you and that's wasting a lot of fresh ginger. Now, I just want the juice. So I'm gonna chop this up really fine, give it a gentle squeeze and all that fresh juice will come right out. You know, sometimes when you're like on the outskirts of a rainforest, it has a little sprinkle. It's not gonna kill you. We'll keep going. All right, fresh ginger, just the juice. Give it a little squeeze. There we are, all that flavor. And that goes in. Now what else do we need? Well, the fresh limes we got, gonna roll on them first, okay? It kind of breaks the tissue up a little bit on the inside, and when you squeeze it, a lot more juice comes out. Okay, and then some fresh orange. What I did is I just peeled it off, took the skin off, and then gave it a little dice. They go in too. And the salsa is just about done. Red wine vinegar, guys, gives it a nice bright acidity. We're gonna pour some of that in there. There we are. Salt and pepper, and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, all the flavors are in there. We have a little bit of the gentle heat from the pepper. We have a little uh, bit of the ginger, which is like a mild spice, I like that. Sweetness, all kinds of stuff in here. Now, off to the mahi-mahi. A simple grill, medium rare. There we go. Love that sound. There we are. Now the mahi-mahi, they're really fresh, really sweet. This heat is about a medium high, okay? Three to four minutes on either side. You'll know when it starts to flake a little bit that they're ready. We're gonna pull them off the grill and we're gonna put some of that mango sauce on top. Just you wait. All right, so we got all four off the grill. This mango sauce has been sitting here. I'm gonna plate this first because I don't wanna cover up the beautiful lines that I just put on the fish. This way, if you want a bite of mango salsa and a little bit of fish, your guests can decide on their own. We'll put that down first. And cooking is so easy, guys, when you buy locally and in season, because Mother Nature puts all the flavors that should be eaten together, together right in front of you. We'll plate this right on top. Really pretty. And some of that delicious curly leaf parsley makes a beautiful garnish. If you want this recipe and all of my other recipes, growingagreenerworld.com. Everybody, dig in. The great American preservationist John Muir once said, when one tugs on anything in nature, he finds it's connected to the rest of the world. And I think the people of Dominica have taken that message to heart in a way that we can all learn something from. And it's easy to take for granted how our actions at home can have a far-reaching impact, good or bad, no matter where we live. And to learn more about the nature island of the Caribbean, or just to be a better environmental steward, we have a lot of information on our website, and the address is the same as our name. It's growingagreenerworld.com. I'm Joe Lample. And I'm Nathan Lyon. And we'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World. Okay, so what happens? You spend a few days here on the island, man, and everything is okay. You start growing hair. I like it. I'm going to stay. 